permit me to ask you this question. Why is prayer so important? Ask your neighbor, why is prayer so important? Ask your neighbor, why is prayer so important? To mankind, to government, to leaders, to kings and queens. This is what we want to answer today. And I want to take my reading from that first Samuel 23. First Samuel 23. I want to read for you. One day, news came to David that the Philistines were at Kaila, stealing grain from the threshing floors. David asked the Lord, should I go and attack them? Yes, go and save Kaila, the Lord told him. But David's men said, we are afraid even here in Judah. We certainly don't want to go to Kaila to fight the whole Philistine army. Verse 4, Sir David asked the Lord again and again. The Lord replied, Go down to Kaila, for I will help you conquer the Philistine. So David and his men went to Kaila. They slaughtered the Philistines and took all their livestock and rescued the people of Kaila. Are you listening to that? That is 1 Samuel 23, verse 1 to 5. Let's go to verse 10 now. 9, 10 to 14. But David learned of Saul's plan and told Abiathar the priest to bring the effort and ask the Lord what he should do. Then David prayed, O Lord God of Israel, I have heard that Saul is planning to come and destroy Kaila because I am here. Will the leaders of Kaila betray me to him? And, with, and will Saul actually come? As I have heard, O Lord God of Israel, please tell me. And the Lord said, he will come. Again David asked, will the leaders of Kaila betray me and my men to Saul? The Lord replied, yes, they will betray you. Are you listening to that? They will betray you. Verse 13, so David and his men, about 600 of them, now left Kaila and began roaming the countryside. Word soon reached Saul that David had escaped, so he didn't go to Kaila after all. David now stayed in the strongholds of the wilderness and in the hill country of Ziv. Saul hunted him day after day, but God did not let Saul find him. Are you listening to that? So when you go home, take time to read this First Samuel, chapter 23, verse 1 to the end. But where we want to establish ground is verse 5, 1 to 5, and verse 10 to 14. And also that book of Matthew 26, verse 31 to 41. And that book of Matthew 6, verse 6 to 7. And that book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. This shall answer our question. Why is prayer so important to mankind, to leaders, to government, to kings and queens? Ask your neighbor, why is prayer so important for me and for you? Yes. This is what we want to answer today. Prayer makes us to be ready 
for the things we are not ready for. Tell them never say prayer makes us to be ready for the things we are not ready for. It makes us to approach life and its challenges with expectation. A forecast. It's going to rain today. Later today it will rain. Hmm. Let me take my umbrella. Hmm. It will be very cold this evening and I'm going. Let me take a, a, a warm jacket. Hmm. It will be very hot today. Let me wear a light clothes. It makes us to approach life with a forecast, expectation. That is prayer. It makes us to be ready for the things we are not ready for. You know, there are many things you are not ready for. Many of you are not ready for death. Mm. You don't, you're not even ready for some, your loved one to die. Mm. Many of you are not ready for, for retrenchment. Many of you are not ready for, for anything bad to happen to your people you love. You are not ready. But prayer makes us ready for the things we are not ready for. It makes us to approach life with a focus, with an expectation, with anticipation. When we are not spiritual, we become careless, prayerless, lazy and sleepy. We become carried by the happenings around us. Like the servant of Elijah, when he saw the army hunting for Elijah in the city with chariots, horses, he cried. He said, Master, look what is happening. But Elijah said to the servant, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see those who are fighting for us those who are protecting us. You see, when you don't pray, you become threatened, scared by what is happening around you. The quickest way to destroy our lives is to live without prayer. Tell the said the quickest way to destroy your own life is to live without prayer a prayerless life. That is the quickest way to destroy your life. You will agree with me that battles, fights, wars are lost or won before they are fought or take place. When you go back to 1 Samuel 23, David asked God, can I go and fight against the Philistine in Keilah? The Lord said, yes, go. But the army said, we are afraid in our own town. 600 of us, we are talking about a big army. David went again and again to God, Lord, will you deliver this Philistine into our hand? The Lord said, go there and defeat them. This means we win our battles before they actually take place, or we lose our battles before they actually take place. David won the Philistine the night before the battle was fought the following day. He just asked God, will you deliver these people to me? The Lord said, yes. He, he, he went there knowing that I'm a winner. I'm going. Because when Jesus said yes, nobody can say no. What we do in secret in private will be revealed in public. Jennifer say, what we do in secret will be revealed in public. Matthew 6, verse 6. Let us hear 
verse 6 to 7. Six verse six. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you mm-hmm. and pray to your father in private. Uh-huh. Then your father, who sees everything, will reward you. Why is prayer so important to mankind? Many of you, you are going to fight. Already you have lost the battle. While some of you, you are going to fight, already you have won the battle. Many things, many battles are already won or lost before they take place in our lives. Many marriages are already divorced before they start marrying. But you marry is just celebration. God already knows that this marriage will not last. Foundation is wrong. This is that. Many business we venture into. God already know that uh, hey, no breakthrough. Eh? Spend money, invest. Mm-hmm. Why is prayer so important to mankind, to kings, to queens? David was a king. Keep going to God. Will you deliver them to me? Will I win? Look at life. He won the fight the night before it was fought. Not on the day of the battle. The night while he was praying, looking at the stars of the skies in the night. Father, Father, will you help me to win? Will I win? Will I win? Will I win? The Lord said, yes, you will win. My people say, these people are too many. Will I win? Will I win? The Lord said, yes, you will win. Go. Tell the people, 600 men, let's go. They say 20,000, they say, let's go. See what happened. Tell never say, see what happened. When God is involved, it does not matter who else is involved. Tell never say, when God is involved, when God is involved, it does not matter who else is involved. Prayer helps us to be in line with God's will and intention for our life. Prayer helps us to take our position. Our position is humility, not arrogance, not pride. Jesus told the disciple in Matthew 26, pray that you don't fall into temptation. Are you listening? He says what? That you don't do what? That you don't fall into temptation. makes us to be ready for the things that we are not ready for. Prayer. Temptation cannot hurt us if we have been expecting it and prepared ourselves for it by prayer. Tell never say temptation cannot hurt us if we have been expecting it and prepared ourselves for it by prayer. Jesus knew he would be betrayed. That is why he went to pray. Oh Lord, let this cup pass away from me. Let your will be done, not mine. When he realized that the answer is not coming, He's feeling very heavy, sorrowful, heavy unto death. He said, let your will be done. For God to answer our prayer, when we pray, there should be no disparity 
no difference between our lifestyle and our prayer. I hope you are getting me. I hope you are getting me. I say to you again, for God to answer our prayer when we pray, there should be no disparity, no difference between our lifestyle and our prayer. Because our thoughts, our words, and our action to Jesus are prayer. Tell never say our thoughts, our words, our action to Jesus is prayer. Let, let me simplify it. Our prayers are as powerful as our lifestyle. I think that is more clear now. Are you listening to me? I say our prayers are as powerful as our lifestyle. Read John chapter 9, verse 31, to confirm this in scripture. John chapter 9, verse 31. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. God does not listen to sinners. But he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ah, this is what I mean. Our prayer are as powerful as our lifestyle. When we pray, there should be no disparity between how we live our life and our prayer. Can you imagine somebody who just came from a nightclub coming to you in the name of Jesus? Be healed. Where have you seen that? We want to go to that place. Our prayer are as powerful as our lifestyle. Simple. So, prayer is not for everyone. Prayer is for what? It's for the godly. Because the Bible says, God does not hear prayers of sinners. This means the Bible is telling us that prayer is not for everyone. Not everybody is praying in every house. But the Bible is telling us that prayer is not for everybody. It's for the godly. It's for the righteous. Because God does not hear prayer of sinners. This is now we tell you that it's obvious. If God does not hear prayers of sinners, it means sinners will not go to heaven. That is how clear it is. ourselves by material things. We godly people. Tell never say we don't measure ourselves by material things. We godly people. Yes, those who are godly, we don't measure ourselves by material things. We measure ourselves by spirit because spirit is the best measurement. People say God does not help answer prayer. God answer prayer. <laughs> I'm talking to Christian. I only say that. They say God does not answer prayer. I say God answer prayer. God answer prayer. How? Ask your neighbor, how does God answer prayer? By saying yes or no. Because Christian, when you pray for something and God does not give you for yet, he pray. You say God has not heard. No. If you are a godly man, God hear your prayer. And he answer it by saying yes or oh no. Jesus said, remove this cup from me. The Lord said no. But he answered the prayer. He said no. But look at the Christianity we, 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 we have translated to now. Say, I'm a Christian. God, I've been praying for a job. I've been praying for this. God has no him. God answer prayer by saying yes or no. He said yes to Jesus. I mean no to Jesus. Jesus said, remove this. He said no. 
you have to die for my people. You have to die for what? For mankind and for the whole world. He said, oh, yes, Lord, let your... How many of us say when you are looking for something, you say, well, mm, you begin to jump from one place to another. No, it has to happen. God is your, is your, yeah? is your boy. Do it for me. Heal me, heal me, heal me, heal me. <laughs> what if that sickness is to keep you down? It humble you. What if that poverty, God see that this one bless him? Oh God, he will, he will, he will trample on people. What if? What if that thing you are looking for it will shorten your lifetime? God answer our prayer by saying yes or. Mm, stop. If you're a Christian, stop saying God does not answer your prayer. If you have been looking for something, God, it means he said no. It means he said what? No. So no is not an answer. But to us here, no is not an answer. No, he has to do it. God has to do it. That's it. Prayer keeps us in line. With God's will and intention for our life. It keeps us humble. Listen, I know every time you keep asking questions, that hey, how can this person do this? We are talking of Christian, as Abi. How can this person do this? How can he say this about men of God? How can he say this about woman of God? How can he say this about his brother? How can he say this? Jesus said, pray that you don't enter into temptation. Prayer helps us to live above temptation. So what are we saying? The people that we saw betraying man of God, woman of God, betraying their pastor, their leader, betraying you, you betray them. It's because they don't pray. Jesus told the disciple in that Luke 26, pray that you don't fall into temptation. What happened when the soldiers came? Peter said, I don't know you. They say, you are Jesus. I don't know Jesus. If you talk against me tomorrow, you people that are listening, know that the man is not a prayerful person. He fell into what? Into temptation. If this woman start talking bad about you and you always laugh together, tomorrow he said this. Simple. He's no longer praying. Stop. Stop asking why, why, why. You have the answer today. You keep asking, how come? What is this? Prayer keeps us in line with God. It keeps us humble. It maintains the fear of God in our heart. When you're no longer praying, you, become, you can become a monster any moment. You can deny even what you know. You can deny even what helped you. You deny it. Hey! That is people who don't pray. That is what we expect from a, a prayerless person. He become careless, sleepy, and lazy. That's it. What to do? The way we keep asking questions from time to time. Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? It's the answer in the Bible. Imagine these people, they've been with our Lord. He's telling them, pray that you don't enter into temptation. He knew that temptation is coming and none of them will stand. That's why prayer makes us to be ready for the things we are not ready for. It makes us to approach life with a forecast, with an expectation. Because 
Satan attack, God protect. Tell them I say, Satan attack, God protect. Yeah. So prayer bring us in closeness to our Creator. What does our Creator do? He protects. Prayerlessness draw us away from our Creator and close to our our enemy. What does our enemy do? He attack. That is it. He attack. There are many things, many crises that are waiting for us that we are not aware of. Tell never said there are many crises, many challenges, many problems that are ahead of our lives that we are not aware of. And we can only prepare for them by If you find yourself falling into temptation, simple, you never prayed. That is why you fail. You never what? You never prayed. That is why you fall into it. Prayer helps us to maintain our position. The best man in the world cannot maintain his integrity, his position, no longer than God keeps him in it. And how does God keep us in our position? By what? By prayer. We have learned that when God sent a man, he can defeat any enemy, no matter how strong, how weak, I mean, how powerful, how smart that enemy is. When God sent a man, when he said, go, even the whole world is against you. Nothing can stop you. This means when God gives you a vision and it is opposed by men, don't reduce it. Tell never say when God gives you a vision, a dream, and it is opposed by men. Don't reduce it. Don't what? Don't reduce it. People of God, winning does not start around us, but it starts inside of us. Success does not start around us. It starts on the inside of us. That is why David was not considering the number of the soldiers he had because he knew that winning begins inside. That is why today we have people that are fighting on the outside but they are filled with fear on the inside. Such was the case of David and Goliath. A giant that was defeated by a stone. Some of the battles we overcome today, you know, the victory comes as a result of what? Of how we live our lifestyle. Some of us, you see us overcoming things. It's not yes, last night prayer. It's prayers of many years ago, how we live our life. That's why I say to you, don't judge the book by its cover. The information is on the inside, not on the outside. <laughs> Can never say, don't judge the book by its cover. The information, the knowledge, the everything is on the inside, not on the outside. So this is the point we wanted to raise today. Why is prayer so important? 
to us, mankind. Because every time we approach things, if we can know that many things, if you can pray, you will know that you, they are yours before they become yours. Many things you are fighting in your life, you will know whether they will defeat you before you fight them or you will defeat them. If you know they will defeat you, definitely you will not want to go there because you know that you will not make it. Hallelujah. A prayerless home is a godless home. And a godless home opens doors for Satan to enter. Tell never say a prayerless home is a godless home. A godless home opens doors for Satan to enter. That is it. Where there is no God, Satan enter. Satan cannot enter where there is God. He only enter where there is no God. And how does God become dominant in a place? By prayer. By prayer. Hallelujah. Imagine you are a gossiper, a liar, a hater. How can you ask things from God and God give you? A cheat. You just begin to ask things and God just give you. When John 9 31 says, God does not hear prayers of sinners, He hears the prayers of godly people. How come? Imagine I'm gossiping this and everything, and immediately I'm now going for prayer line now. Hey, come on, mm, what is your problem? Okay, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's not possible. That is not what? Nicodemus even told our Lord Jesus that we know that no one can do the things you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus is also telling us that God does not hear prayers of sinners. No, it's a DB. How do you tap a high? Just him. Hallelujah. Yes, let us rise up.